Konami Gohara is easily one of my favorite voice actresses in the world of anime. Truly a voice that whenever I hear it, it makes me melt. And I figured today, her birthday, which if for some reason she's actually watching this, happy birthday, I figured what better time for me to express why I love Konami Kohara so much. Now, honestly, I didn't catch on to Konami Kohara really quickly. This is an actress that reportedly has loved anime ever since she was in junior high, graduating high school and immediately pursuing her career in the voice acting. And it seemed like she went unnoticed until she finally got her first roles in 2016. But her actual breakthrough role didn't happen until 2017. Yes, Akane of Tsukigakure. And even then, me personally, I didn't really gravitate to that character. I didn't really get her tone in that voice. For me, it wasn't until Kukuri. Kukuri of Magical Circle Guru Guru was that first moment in which I heard this girl's voice and thought to myself, hmm, this is a very unique and very special voice. The best way I can describe her voice is almost a combination of in the throat and in the nasal. It's a very smooth and comforting voice that I don't really typically hear in many voice actresses. Now I say that, but yes, technically Chica is loud, but I think we're, it's one of those things where despite the fact that I think it's nice to have that broad spectrum of what a voice actor does, you don't want them pigeonholed. There is an element that, yes, whenever they do do a certain type of role, it's the one that you usually typically kind of gravitate towards. It's the type that just works so well for you. Tomorrow she could do a cackling bad guy character and I would be perfectly fine with it, but again, when it goes to a role like Roxy McGurdy or something a little bit more soft-spoken, that's where it usually grabs me. Yes, later on when she grows in popularity, she'll say in a lot of interviews that she does really well with idiotic roles. But I think that's sort of a product of what kind of keeps being handed to her. Which yes, her massive debut was easily Chika of Kaguya-sama Love is War. This is a very social and a very ditzy and almost idiotic character. The almost scene grabbing and overtaking nature of Chika of Kaguya-sama Love is War easily landed her as a very popular voice. And yes, very much so the famous Chica dance that became extremely viral, having millions upon millions of views in no time on YouTube and yes, many people dancing it out. With that, I almost think her popularity sort of took off. But I think for me, the moment that I started actually paying attention to where she was going, like this is a name that I need to start keeping track of, was easily Shamiko of Demon Girl Next Door. I absolutely fell in love with Shamiko. And it's not so much a case of the fact that she pulls off an idiotic character, which yes, her tone of voice sort of plays into it. And she's really able to pull it off really well, but almost because Shamiko almost has a very pure nature to her. You can say it's ditzy and idiotic, but it's almost a case of naivety. And that really does work really well with Shamiko. Like she literally brings that character to life. Fumbling over herself and trying to figure out the situation is what makes her so lovable. She's so good at just frazzled. And often in a lot of cases with Shamiko, especially in her humor, it's a lot to do with that frazzledness that she gets. Again, she's not, she's kind of dumb a little bit, but it's, it's like a cluelessness that she's just trying to figure things as she go along and she gets overwhelmed with situations really, really easy. And again, it's technically the charm of why I liked Shamiko so much. It's why that series, despite the fact that it's, yes, technically does get a little bit crazy later on, it's mostly a comedy that just centers around just the silliness of, let's face it, the not magical girl <laughs> and not the, the enemy of the magical girl rather than the magical girl herself, which is surprising to me because admittedly in her interviews mentioned the idea that she just gets a lot of idiot girl roles and that she's really good at doing it, which is fine. Her next big role that ultimately made me fall in love with her voice, like literally fall in love with her voice. Like I cannot get enough of this. Similar to my case with Kendra Suda, Aoyuki, Rie Kajimia, it was Mushoko Tensei Jabba's reincarnation, Roxy Magurdia. As you can see, <laughs> I am a massive fan of Roxy McGurdia. And it's funny because, yeah, you can say that she's a little bit naive, but Roxy McGurdia is anything but an idiot. And she's never really portrayed as an idiot. She messes up, she fumbles, she makes mistakes, but that's what makes her human, even though she's a demon. But like many seiyus that I fall in love with, but at the same time, never can seem to remember their actual names, her voice became Roxy. Every time I hear her anywhere else, she's Roxy. Take Genshin Impact, for example. When I was playing that game, I'm having fun, and at some point, it hit me. 
My character I'm playing right now is Roxy. Mona is literally Roxy. She's a wizard. She has her little quirks about her that she's a little bit careless with certain things. And she technically uses water magic. <laughs> she became a character that I went out of my way to use just for her Seiyu alone. It's funny that we can get to that point where we love a Seiyu so much. We love their voice so much that we go out of our way in order to consume the media that they actually play a role in. That was like Rei Kojima back in the day. Every single time she had a role, it was to be the Sundere character, and I watched every single one of them because I loved how she pulled that character off. And while I don't necessarily agree with Konami Kohara in that, that she only gets roles for idiots, Akane of Tsukigakide wasn't an idiot, Kukuri wasn't really necessarily an idiot, she was young and naive, Mina, yes, of Takagi-san, <laughs> Yeah, she's pretty idiotic. Kaya Hattori Bochi, not really. Shamiko, yes. Roxy, no. Yuni of Princess Connect, heck no. Sachi of Couple of Cuckoos. Mei of Hell's Paradise, not really. And especially not Nishimura of Clueless First Friend. I do feel like, yes, they can sometimes feel like they're being kind of bottlenecked into that certain role, but she's definitely broadened herself. Broadened herself to more of a character that I believe is more just soft-spoken. Again, a character that kind of warms your heart. And if I can continue to get more roles like that, I'm open to them. But at the same time, I'm more than open to have as many roles of goofy, idiotic characters like Chika. Like I said at the beginning, Konami Kohara has gone down as easily one of my favorite seiyus. One that I'm keeping track of on a seasonal basis. I would love to one day at a convention meet up with her Sounds like she is pretty much the life of the party, as they kind of explain with an interview for this whole Kaguya Summer Love is War. Everybody sort of points out that she is similar to Chika and that she's the one that runs into the group and makes everybody socialize. But until then, I will enjoy playing Blue Archive, where you can literally have her say your name. Anderu-sensei! Okay, close enough. I mean, they don't really have a Drew <laughs> in their language. It's close enough. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and again, if for some reason Konami Kohara or somebody related to her contacts her about this video, happy birthday. Your work is incredible, and I cannot wait for your next role. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope to do something like this for all of my favorite seiyus and voice actors and voice actors, like Kendra Suda, Aoyuki, Ryu Kajimiya. These are literally the voices that bring characters that we love so much to life, and I love keeping track of certain ones that just stand out from the crowd. But if you like this video, make sure that like button down below, comment. Let me know what you think of Konami Kohara. Do you love her voice? Do you love her work? What's your favorite role that she's played in? Additionally, if you're new to this channel, make sure that subscribe button so you got my content. I did news reviews, first impressions, top list of its animates pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support this channel more, I will greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us on Patreon, tips, links, super thanks, and membership button down below. Greatly appreciate everybody it does, and y'all take care.